Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, students of all ages, I am uh, Mr. Hess, live, no, not live, recorded, uh, talking about Math 2, no, talking about Math 1 Honors, I'm confused. Um, this next topic, so just to kind of give you a quick overview, um, pretty much everything that's built nowadays is built on a coordinate plane somewhere, in some computer, and then they take that, co that coordinate plane and they overlay it in some real life setting. Um, whether you're talking about a road or a car or a boat or your phone or anything. Everything that's built to put on a coordinate plane. So that's what this this next topic is really, that's what coordinate geometry is really all about, is getting you familiar with coordinates and whether they're numerical coordinates or in this case, variable coordinates. That's what we're trying to get good at. So the idea is take an object, take a geometric shape, put it onto a Cartesian coordinate plane, this is how video games work. Um, the reason those things move around on the screen is because they have physics and algebra coordinating, uh, coordinating them or organizing them or overlaying them onto some, um, some screen. So you can, you can take shapes, for example, like this rectangle, and you can put it on a coordinate plane any way you want. There's easy places to put it, there's logical places to put it, and there's less logical places to put it. One possible way to do it would be make the y-axis symmetric with the shape in some way, shape, or form. So that's how I chose to do it for this first rectangle. Uh, so you got an x-axis, you got a y-axis. I'm going to give you um, one of the vertices, one of those four vertices, in terms of a variable. You can think of it as a number, but not in terms of a number. I'm going to give you in terms of a variable. So using a and zero, you should be able to come up with some of the other vertices, some of the other corners. And then I'm also going to give you this one up here above it. We know that that also has to have an a coordinate, or sorry, an x coordinate of a, because the rectangle is vertical here and has a slope that's parallel with the y axis. So I needed to introduce a new variable, I introduced b. If we were in class, I'd say, hey, take 30 seconds, write the coordinates of these two in terms of a and b. So do that, go for it. And I think maybe the bottom one is the, the obvious, the more obvious one. If this was really a line of symmetry and this was the positive value of a, this would have to be the opposite of that. So that bottom left would be, sorry, would be negative a comma zero. And kind of the same idea with the top one. The y coordinate would stay the same. That would still be b, but you'd be at negative a comma b. Hopefully those two coordinates make sense. That's what we're doing. Taking figures and putting them on a coordinate plane is usually a pretty easy topic. Uh, for, mo for most Math 1 students, Math 1 honor students typically. I also want to add something on here, turn this into a trapezoid um, by adjoining these two triangles. And I want those two triangles to be isosceles triangles, just going to get more bang for our buck on this particular problem. So those are isosceles right triangles. They got right angles down here where they adjoin, where they connect with the rectangle, and they are isosceles. Just based on that, you should be able to get coordinates for this point and coordinates for this point out here in terms of A and B again. Again, I would pause this thing and see if you've got the right coordinates. <clears throat> so if you think of what we know on here, we knew this distance was A. We just need to know that distance so we can get coordinates for that one. Now we knew this distance, vertical distance, was B. And if this little triangle is isosceles, that means this is B, this is also B. So that bottom right should be a plus b, should be the sum of those two comma zero because we're still on the x-axis. And then kind of repeat that thinking over here. This distance, if I want to think of distance being negative for a minute, is negative a. If this isosceles triangle has a height of b, it also has a width of b. So I'd have to go negative in the negative direction, negative b units, which would make this you know negative a minus b comma zero. Hopefully those make sense. That's sort of the big idea. Use variables to get another set of coordinates. Uh, I'm going to show you this, this next example on your paper. Um, you know, try this one. I'll give you a starting point. Um, it appears to be what kind of shape? A parallelogram. Exactly. Very good thinking. Well done, Brady. Good job. Um, so I'm going to put those three points. Typically, a, another way, nice way to orient things is to put one of them at the origin, at 0, 0, so that the other three are easier to get. So I'm going to call that first one A0. Um, I really can't get either of these in terms of A yet. Um, I'm going to give you the top left, call that point B, C. You should be able to get this one, and I'll come back in part two.
to see if you've done that correctly.